So I'm gonna do a video today on a couple things, a few things you actually need to have to be able to survive just in case of an emergency. If you're, let's just say, you know, somebody does something to your vehicle uh, and you're stranded to prevent being stranded. I mean, if you can't trust anybody out here and there's other RVs around that probably would most likely try to mess with you, maybe they would help. I don't know, man. Personally, I don't trust anybody, so. I mean, that's just me. So here are a few essential stuff and precautionary measures. Uh, basically, like four, you know, five things you absolutely need and at least three precautionary measures that you must take in order to be able to get out of the desert in the middle of the desert not not near the side of the road the middle of the desert where AAA or any sort of towing service really doesn't want to come out and get you and you'll only be able to get out of here with a helicopter by uh, radioing a helicopter which hopefully never comes to that, right? Um, <clears throat> first things first, the most important thing you need is food and water. And when I say food and water, I mean enough food and water. At least half a month's worth of food and water, if not a month's worth of food and water and drinks, Gatorade, whatever you, whatever you need. Second, very good tires. Tires that won't mess you up get messed up preferably ones that don't even really need air see these tires that i have are construction tires they are stated they are the best tires you could possibly have on a van or any vehicle in my opinion I mean, if they fit on your vehicle i don't know i'm not an expert I'm not a mechanic so um these tires the history of me having these tires i've had these tires for three years i've been driving in all sorts of terrain snow rain sand dirt rocks etc i've gotten stuck in mud but i still managed to get out of it uh, without deflating them anyway so <clears throat> um um right and i was stuck in snow too on the side of the road i didn't get that on video ever but i was stuck on so i had to call the state state trooper because i was a, a yuppie and at the time and i um still kind of a yuppie anyway so uh he told me that all you need to do was back out okay so um uh yeah, just to be safe so these tires they happen to have lasted me i haven't i first of all i don't need to fill them up at all like once every seven months that's that's how good they are i've only i never need to fill these tires up i've only filled them up once or twice and they only lose like one psi like every probably like three months it seems like they're they're hard tires man these are the hardest best tires you could possibly have like from from just from my experience having them i came with the van by the way i didn't buy them special i was lucky enough to get these construction tires with this van <laughs> you know saved my life third a locking gas cap somebody can ah! your gas tank they can put stuff in your gas tank or they could siphon your gas but that's highly unlikely in newer vehicles but they could still go under and take it anyway, but I'm just saying, like, you know, if you have a locking gas cap, most of the time, people won't put stuff in your in your gas tank, or they won't be able to sabotage your gas tank, because they won't have the time, because you'll have weapons or something, and, or, or call the cops, I don't know, to be able to uh, avoid somebody sabotaging your gas tank, or putting stuff in your gas tank, or siphoning your gas or whatever the hell they crazy methods do fourth and fifth uh, well i mean fourth is having a weapon you need a weapon i would honestly place that as second but i think a locking gas cap is more important because at least you can leave knowing your van is able to turn on and not blow up or get sabotaged i don't know man i'm not a mechanic but i'm just saying like you don't want nobody putting stuff in your gas tank at least for the long-term health of your vehicle 
and also uh, another precautionary measure that probably goes with the lock and gas cap um, I would say is having some kind of natural mints peppermint spray uh, for me I put pine sol and uh, peppermint uh, fluoride rinse in here and I spray it on the ground around my van to keep the rodents away it has worked pretty well when I've been in the desert for days at end, on end the rodents stay away from my engine as far as I can tell I've looked a couple times I've had other people look there has been no rodents in my engine so far so good for when it gets cold the rodents like to crawl in and at night it does get cold here cold enough at least for the rodents to want to come into your vehicle engine to find warmth because that is the warmest part of your vehicle now some people say to uh open up the uh hood and keep that open but now i'm not taking a chance with that i don't want nobody coming coming around and throwing ah! and messing some meth head some crazy meth head or somebody tries to tar at you trying to like go into your under your hood and putting a hand in there and tinkering around ah! you know what i mean now you should have a gun number one number two you should have a knife i'm not showing the gun because um but yeah at the minimum at least have a 45 so uh another thing you should have is um the last last important most important the least important thing is obviously a way to charge your phone but you can use the alternator this is a spare way a spare way to charge your phone that's what you need this is the fifth and most important thing a spare way to charge your phone this i have this little power bank here i barely use it but because i, I just use the blue eddy or the alternator but this thing works it charges through solar and it charges um you can also use your alternator to charge it because it's a USB powered electronic device with the solar or both. And that's basically everything you need to uh, survive in the desert and all the precautionary measures you need to take to make sure that nobody will harm your vehicle or if they do, you'll still be able to get out of here in one piece with your van at the very least. Also, I believe that even if somebody takes your catalytic converter, you can still manage to drive out of the desert onto a main road, pull onto the side of the road, and be able to call for help. Uh, at you know, without uh, being stuck, I believe. I'm not sure though. But if you do hear somebody try to take your catalytic converter, bang, bang.